Welcome to GATS Tutorials and in this video I'll be covering practice problem 10.1. So given this circuit we are asked to find v1 and v2 using nodal analysis. Now the first thing you notice is that every component has different units, right? This is a resistor in ohms and this is a capacitor in farads and this is an inductor in henrys and this is a resistor in ohms. So the first thing which we must do, guided by the fact that we have a sinusoidal signal, we can therefore transform all of these into impedances. So let's start. To transform a resistor value into its equivalent impedance, you just basically take its value because it is in the same uh, unit as you'd find impedances. So I'm going to say Z, Z for impedance, and then R, which is a subscript, which indicates what kind of component which I'm dealing with. So let's say R2 to indicate this 2 ohm resistor. So the impedance for this 2 ohm resistor is 2 ohms, right? Moving on to the capacitor, to find the impedance of a capacitor, you use such a formula, which says 1 divided by JWC. So using this, we're going to say our W, which is the angular frequency, we're going to find it from our phasor, which is given to us in the circuit. So this is actually cos 2T, just for those who maybe can't see. So this is 10 cos 2T. So this is a place where you'd find the angular frequency. So your W or your omega in Greek notation is two. And this C, this is where you substitute your rho value of your capacitance. So doing that, we know that for sure one over J is, this is this as a complex J or I in your calculator. One over J is actually equals to negative J. So already know that. And now we have W, which is so we're going to multiply this by 1 over W. Our W is 2 and our C is 0 0.2, which is equivalent to 1 over 5, right? So we basically have 2 over 5. So 1 divided by 2 over 5, which is the same as negative J, multiplied by 5 over 2, just the reciprocal of that. And 5 over 2, as we know, is 2.5. So the result or the impedance of this capacitor is negative j 2.5 ohms right and then next we move on to the resistor which is over here up here so we do the same thing as here so the resistor which now has a value of 4 you don't necessarily have to use the these subscripts i just use this to remember which one i'm dealing with so zr4 which corresponds to the 4 ohm resistor is the same as the value of the resistance itself, which is what we have there, right? So that is that. And all we're left with is this inductor. Now for inductor, to find the impedance of an inductor, where L indicates inductance, we use the formula J omega L, right? So J multiplied by omega, which is 2, multiplied by the value of this inductor, so which is 2 Henry's. So multiplying these two, all these three, we have J4 ohms. And that is the impedance which is associated with this inductor. So now we can gladly erase all of these raw values and actually replace them with impedances. So we found the impedance for the capacitor to be negative J2.5 ohms. And this is as it is. And then here we found the inductance of this inductor to be j4 ohms right we have j4 ohms over there to j4 ohms and then this stays the same has the same units as it, its impedance so we're now all set to do what we've been asked to do so we're asked to find v1 and v2 using nodal analysis so by now you're probably familiar with nodal analysis you just focus on a node and check which currents are going in and out and therefore assign the appropriate signs to each of those currents. So for currents which go in, I'm going to say assign a negative value. For currents which go out, we're going to assign a positive value. And all currents which are unlabeled, we're going to assume that they actually go out, right? 
So let's do that. We're going to start at this node, which is node V1. So let's go this side so we have enough space to do everything. So node V1, let's look at node V1. We have this current source, which is going into the node. And we said in is negative. So we're going to say negative 10. We're going to write it in its phasor form, which is something like this. It has no phase angle. And therefore, we have negative 10 as the amplitude. This is, we can't have a negative amplitude. This negative sign only indicates that this, so let's put brackets there. This negative sign only indicates that this current source is going into the node. So you're going to have these brackets and the zero degrees is for the zero phase angle. And we're going to proceed to find, we said if the current is unlabeled, then we're going to say it's, go, it's going out. So it's going out like that, right? So this is V1 and it's directly above this current, this resistor value. So this is the same as Vx because it's the voltage between this point and that point. So to find the current which flows through there using Ohm's law, which is V is equal to IR, I is equal to V divided by R. And therefore, when we get to this point, since we assume this to be going out of the node, we're going to say plus V1 divided by 2, which is the resistor value using this formula. Then we're going to come here, which is the final point which is associated or connected to this node. And we're going to say plus, as we assume the current to be going out, we're going to say V1, subtract V2, and then divided by the impedance, which is along that path, which is negative, J2.5. And we're going to equate everything to zero, right? So this is the equation for the first node. Let's move on to the second node, which is node V2. Now at node V2, this is what we have. We're going to do a similar thing. All the unlabeled currents are going to be going out. So V2, subtract, going that way, subtract V1, divided by negative J, 2.5. Then I'm going to say plus V2, divided, which is the current going down there. V2 divided by J4. And here we have two points, or we're going to say V2, subtract that. So plus V2, subtract 3Vx, subtract so v2 subtract 3 vx divided by 4 which is the resistor value or the impedance along that path and we can equate everything to zero so this is a node and we have three paths associated with the nodes and therefore we expect three terms so that is that now you'll notice that we have a new variable here but this same variable is indicated across this point and i said this is v1 is the voltage across this resistor value and therefore v1 is equal to vx this is because it's indicated directly above this and if you'd measure using a multimeter or any other instrument you'd actually put your wires over here and this is ground and this is the top part so this is the only voltage which is actually across this resistor value and that is why this indicated vx across the resistor is equal to the v1 which is the node voltage so now let's proceed to simplify all of these because we actually asked to find the actual values of these. So you can just cross multiply coming to this equation. You can cross multiply with anything, but I just chose to cross multiply or to basically multiply everything, not cross multiply. To multiply everything with negative J5. So multiplying everything with negative J5, this is what you have. So negative J5, this is the same as just uh, a value of 10. If you have a phase angle of zero, Whatever amplitude you have, it's the same as just having 10, right? So negative J5 multiplied by negative 10, you're going to have a value of J50, obviously. And negative J5 divided by 2, you're going to have negative J2.5, and then you're going to multiply it with a V1. Cool. Now here we're going to have negative J5 divided by negative J2.5, and the result of that should be 2. So this 2 is going to multiply everything, which is V1, subtract V2, which equals to 0. Right? So let's continue to simplify this equation, and we're going to see where it gets us. So now, I plan to use Kramer's rule because everything is quite complicated. I don't want to use simultaneous equations or that method of solving V1 and V2. So the best thing to do right now is to group the variables. So let's group the variables which we have with us here. So grouping the variables, we are going to have... 2, which is associated with that. So we're going to have 2 subtract j 2.5. This is associated with v1. So this and that, those are the only ones which have v1. 
and for v2 we're going to have negative 2 just negative 2 v2 and we're going to take this constant to the other side of the equal sign so it's going to be negative so we're going to have negative j 15. so this is the first equation which you have from node v1 let's move on to node v2 and simplify this equation as well so we said that this is vx is equal to v1 so we can just substitute v1 there just to save time this is v1 fine so let's move on to multiply everything. What can you use here? So you can basically use any value, as I said, but let's use J, let's use J10, right? So using J10 over here, multiplying everything by J10, we're going to have J10 divided by negative J 2.5. So it's going to be, so the J's are going to cancel out and the 2.5 goes four times into that. And the negative is going to divide. So we're going to have negative four multiplied by V2 subtract V1. Then we're going to have J10 divided by this. So the J's are going to cancel out and the four goes in 2.5 times. So we're going to have 2.5 multiplied by V2. So this is 2.5 V2. Then we're going to proceed to this part and have our j because there's nothing which takes it out or divides. So we're going to have our j at our 2.5 because j10 divided by 4 is j2.5. And we're going to multiply that with v2 subtract v3 v1 and it goes to 0. So this is our equation. Let's now group as we did with the first equation. So grouping everything, we're going to have, let's see which ones are associated with v1. We have 4. We have j2.5 multiplied by negative 3, which is going to result in negative j7.5. So these are the only two things which have v1. So we're going to put those in brackets and associate them with v1. And let's check for v2. We have negative 4, which we get from there. So we have negative 4. So let's just, let's just say plus. It doesn't really matter. You just want to group everything so you see what's going on. So negative 4 is the first one, which is associated with that. Then we have 2.5. So plus 2.5. Then we have plus j2.5. So plus j2.5. And all of that is associated with v2. We're going to equate everything to 0. No constants in sight. And therefore, we still have the 0 on the other side of the equal sign. Right? So now, let's just add everything up and see what we're going to get. So we still have 4 minus j7.5 v1. Then we have 2.5 subtract that is going to give us negative 1.5 with j 2.5 v2 is equal to 0. Now, we are going to use Kramer's rule to find v1 and v2. So let's proceed to do that. So this is our first equation. Using Kramer's rule, we're going to find transform this into a matrix of this form. So this is what we have in matrix format v1 v2 equals 2, negative j50, down here at 0. On this side, we're going to have, what is the value here again? I think I raised this value. This is, this should be 4. This is 4. So we have 4, subtract j, 7.5. Then over here, we have negative 1.5 plus j, 2.5. That is what we have. I just transformed the equations into matrix form. And now we're going to find the determinant. So the determinant of this matrix is going to be 2 subtract j2.5 multiplied by this. So this is what you do for a 2 by 2 matrix. To find the determinant, just multiply this and that and subtract that multiply by that. So this is what I'm basically doing. Just cross multiply and subtract the right diagonal from the uh, product of the left diagonal. So that is that. So you have J2.5, then I'm going to subtract the other diagonal and the product of those two, which form the diagonal, which is this. So punching all of this into your calculator, so just multiply this and that, and then subtract this, multiply by that. So this is two, just remember. And now the determinant is going to be, after punching all of that into your calculator, you should get 11.25, negative j, 6.25. It doesn't have units. 
And moving on to the first determinant, which is going to help us to find V1. And we're also going to do the second determinant. So to find the first determinant, you take this column and you move it to the first position or to the first column of this same matrix. So just imagine this moving there. So this is cancelled out or is taken out and replaced by this. So doing the same thing, now we are at determinant 1, right? Doing the same thing, which is multiplying everything, we're going to have negative J50 now because we move this column to the first column here, over here on this matrix. Multiply that with negative 1.5 plus J 2.5. And then we're going to subtract the other diagonal. Since we have a zero over here, that everything is going to be zero because the zero is going to be here. So whatever is here multiplied by that is zero. So that is what we have. You don't really have to write it. You just write zero if you encounter something multiplied by zero just to save time. And your determinant one should be 125 plus J75. Moving on to determinant two. To find determinant two, what you do is you take this same column and you move it to the second column of this matrix. And doing that, you're going to have zero over here. So this multiplied by that is zero. To save time, just going to write zero. And then I'm going to subtract the product of the other diagonal, which is going to be this. So at this point, we're going to have negative J50, obviously, because we move this to the second column. So we're going to have negative J50. And then it's going to be multiplied by this. So multiply by 4, subtract J7.5. So punching all of that into your calculator should give you 375 plus J200. So these are all the determinants which you need to solve the problem at hand. And the problem was to find V1 and V2 using nodal analysis. And using Kramer's rule, we can now say V1 is equal to delta 1 divided by delta. And V2 is equal to delta 2 divided by delta. We now have all our deltas after calculating. So you just substitute these values in here. So delta 1 divided by delta 2 should give you the final value of V1, which is required in the question of 11.327 with an angle of 60 degrees 0 0.02, right? 60.02 degrees. And this is in volts because this is a voltage value. This is a node voltage. And here we have delta 2 divided by delta which is going to be 33.02 with an angle of 57.13 degrees in volts. And that is how you solve this particular problem.